الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنتم خير أمة رقيت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ربي شلي صدري ويسل لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لسان يفكى وقولي The Honorable Minister My respected Mashaik My respected elders And my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be present in this beautiful country, Kenya, for the first time, especially Nairobi. And it's an honor for me to be invited to the third session of Sheikh Ali Sufi International Karat Award as a guest speaker. And the organizers told me to speak for 20 minutes, so I was checking that the Maghrib Azan is there, but he said, no, you can speak for 20 minutes. So I'll follow what has been told to me by the organizers. Inshallah, today, I'll be speaking on the topic of Dawa, the duty of every Muslim to convey the message of the Quran. It is the duty of every Muslim that it should convey the message of the Quran and Islam to the others. Dawa means to invite. We invite to people who are not part of the family. So when we give information of Islam and the message of the Quran, to the non-Muslims is called as Dawah. When we speak about Islam or the message of the Quran to the Muslims, the more appropriate word is Islam. But this word Dawah, they translated as both giving the message to non-Muslim and the Muslims together, but the more appropriate word when we convey the message of Islam and the message of Quran to the non-Muslim, it is Dawah. I start my talk by quoting a verse of the glorious Quran from Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110, where Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. O ye Muslims, ye are the best of peoples evolved for mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 110, is giving us Muslims the greatest honor. He's calling us the Khaira Ummah, the best of people. Whenever there is honor, it is always followed up with the responsibility. There is no honor without responsibility. So when Allah is giving us an honor and calling us Muslims as Khaira Ummah, don't you think we have a responsibility? The answer is given in the same verse. Allah continues and says, because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. So Allah is calling us the Khaira Ummah because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. If we do not enjoin what is good and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we aren't fit to be called as Muslims. We aren't fit to be called as Khaira Ummah. Whenever there is honor, it is always followed up with the responsibility. For example, a principal in a school has got more honor than a teacher. A teacher in a school has got more honor than a clerk. Similarly, the principal in the school has got more responsibility than a teacher. A teacher in a school has got more responsibility than a clerk. There is no honor without responsibility. So when Allah is giving us an honor in the Quran and calling us a khaira ummah, our duty is to enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. If we do not enjoy what is good and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we aren't fit to be called as khaira ummah. We aren't fit to be called as Muslims. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 143, that Allah has made us an ummah a vast, a middlemost community, so that we should convey the message to the nations and the messenger will be a witness over us. If you read Surah Tawba, Surah Tawba is the only chapter in the glorious Quran which does not begin with the beautiful formula, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Every other chapter of the Quran, every other surah, 
Start with the beautiful formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. What is the reason that Surah Tawbah does not start with the beautiful formula, Bismillah Rahman Rahim? There are various reasons given by Mufassari. One of them is when we read the first few verses of Surah Tawbah, there is a warning given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're walking with your mother or with your wife on the streets of Nairobi, and if there is a hooligan who snatches the handbag of your mother or of your wife and runs away, what will you do? But naturally, you will catch up. You run after him. And when you catch up with him, you will not say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You will not say that, Bismillah rahman rahim you will get down to the subject directly. You say, hey, mister, give me the handbag, I'll break your neck. Hey, mister, give me the handbag, I'll break your arm. You will get down to the subject directly. So when you read the first few verses of Surah Tawbah, there is a peace treaty between the Muslims and the mushriks of Makkah. And this peace treaty was unilaterally broken by the mushriks of Makkah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number five, He's addressing the mushriks of Makkah and giving them a warning that you better put things straight in four months' time, otherwise a declaration of war. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's giving us a warning, giving the mushriks of Makkah warning, he's getting down to the subject directly. But by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number 24, he's addressing us Muslims. And Allah says, Kul in kana abaukum. Say with it, be for your fathers. Wa abnaukum, or your sons. Wa ikhwanukum, or your brothers. Wa azwajukum, or your spouses, your wives or husbands. Wa ashiratukum, or your relatives. What are your considerations? Are they your fathers? Are they your sons? Are they your brothers? Are they your spouses, husbands or wives? Are your relatives? And Allah continues. The wealth you have amassed. The business in which you deal. The house in which you live. Allah is asking, what are your considerations? You are afraid to do dawah? Maybe after you have accepted Islam. Maybe because of your father. Or maybe because of your sons. Your brothers your wives or husbands, your relatives, and Allah continues. The wealth they have amassed, the business in which you deal, the house in which you live, what are your considerations? And if you love, and Allah continues, Allah says, Ahabba ilaykum min Allahi wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabili fatarabbasu that if you love all these eight things more than Allah, more than his Rasul, more than doing jihad, striving and struggling in his way, Allah says, فَتَرَبَّسُ wait, حَتَّى يَأْتِي اللَّهِ بِأَمْرِي وَاللَّهُ لَا أَزْرُكُمُ الْفَاسِقِينَ And Allah guides not the Fasik people. Wait until Allah brings his decision unto you. Wait until Allah brings his destruction to you. And Allah guides not the Fasik people. So Allah is giving us a warning in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 24, that if you do not do your job, if you do not convey the message of Islam, if you do not convey the message of the Quran to the others, Allah says, wait until Allah brings about his destruction unto you, until Allah brings about his decision unto you. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 28, if you do not do your job, if you do not convey the message of the Quran and the message of Allah to the others, Allah will substitute in your place another people. And they will not be like you. So Allah is giving you a warning that if you do not convey the message of the Quran and the message of Allah to the others, Allah will substitute in your place another people. Summa laikunam salakum, and they will not be like you. Allah is telling us Muslims 
that we are the khaira umma, we are the best of people because it is our duty to convey the message of Islam to those who are unaware of it. If you do not do the job, Allah will substitute in your place another people, summa laikinam salakum, and they will not be like you. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Jummah, chapter number 62, verse number 5, that the Mosaic law was given to the Jews, but they did not do the job. Allah asked them to convey the message of Allah to the others, they did not do it. Allah says they are like donkeys on whose back is loaded tomes of books and they do not understand. Allah is telling us that it is the duty of every Muslim. Now we are the chosen people to convey the message of Islam to the others. And the strategy of conveying is very easy. One of the master key for Dawah is Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul yahl kitab say, O people of the book, Ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa im bainuna bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'abda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushrika bi shayyam. That we associate no partner with him. Wala yattakhiz abadun abadun arbaban minun illallah. That we erect not among ourselves. Lords and patrons other than Allah. Fainta wallah. If then they turn back. Fakul shadu. Say ibe witness. Biyanna muslimun. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the glorious Quran is the master key for da'wah. Ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa im bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. While doing dawah, you can start with anything what is common. Maybe science, maybe technology, maybe literature. But while doing dawah, your main aim should be about tawheed. Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. So while doing dawah, you can start with any commonalities. But the most important commonality is Allah, na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. You may convince him not to tell lies, not to drink alcohol, not to have pork, not to cheat. But if you cannot remove the shirk from the life of the non-Muslim, your dawah is useless. Unless you do not convey the message of Tawheed, your dawah is useless. The master key is come to common terms as between us and you. Number one term is Allah, na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. We Muslims give excuse for not doing the job. And we say that inshallah, when we have knowledge like Sheikh Ahmed, Didal, we'll start doing dawah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number four, hadith number 3461, propagate even if you know one verse. So even if you know one verse of Islam or one verse of the Quran, it is your duty to convey to others. You don't have to wait till you become like Sheikh Ahmed Didat. You start doing dawah and Allah will start giving you more and more knowledge. Whatever you know, even if you know one verse, it's your duty to convey to the others. And Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al-Asr, Chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, the path to salvation, Rahi Nijat. Wal as, inna al insana al fi khus, illa ladina amanu, wa amilu salihati, wa tawasa bil haqq, wa tawasa bil sabr. That by the token of time, man is verily in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, dawah, and islah, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. These four things are most important, are compulsory for any Muslim to go to Jannah. Four things are equally important. Iman, faith, what was of will, uh, Iman, that is faith, amal salihat, righteous deed, what was of will haq, inviting people to truth, and what was of will sab, inviting people to patience and perseverance. If anyone is missing, you may be a very good Muslim, you may pray five times a day, you may be fasting in the month of Ramadan, you may have gone for Hajj, but if you don't do dawah under normal circumstances, you shall not go to Jannah. If Allah wants to forgive you and put you in Jannah, that's Allah's prerogative. But according to Surah Al-Asr, all four are equally important. Iman, 
righteous deed, doing dawa, and fatwa sub inviting people to patient perseverance. Therefore, every Muslim should at least be a part-time daid. Allah says in Surah Imran chapter 3, verse number 104, let there arise out of you a band of people, a group of people, inviting people to the truth and forbidding them from doing wrong. These are the people who shall attain felicity. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is talking about full-time da'is. How we are full-time doctors, full-time engineers, full-time lawyers, full-time businessmen. How many full-time da'is do we have? How many people do we have on the international level roaming about and conveying the message of the Quran and Islam? So being a full-time da'i, Allah says, Allah will give you a higher level in Jannah. And Allah promises in the Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 33. In Surah Fatah chapter number 48 verse 28. And in Surah Saf chapter number 61 verse number 9. Huwa allazi arsala rasulahu biluda wa dinul haq liuzeer awal dinna kulli. That Allah sent his messenger with guidance so that it will prevail over all the other religions, over all the other isms, whether it be Christianism, Judaism, secularism, whether it be socialism, atheism, Islam is destined to supersede all. Kulle, master them all. Waqafa billahi shayda. And enough is Allah as a witness. And two places Allah says, Malakari al mushrikun. And how am I? The idol worshippers don't like it. Allah has given a promise that this deal will prevail. Allah does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah is sufficient to make his deen prevail. Allah is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet job and to earn a prophet's reward. <coughs> I would like to end my talk by quoting the verse of the Quran, or Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33, which says that woman ahsanu kaula mim mandawi lallahi wa amilu salihaun wa kaula inna nimil muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness, and says that I'm a Muslim. Wa akhirat dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.